for me is that I am kind of an over annotator. I annotate a lot. Um, so you're going to see me write all over this, okay? How many of you have used TPCAST before, have heard of TPCAST? Okay, if you've been in ninth grade here, you have heard of it. Um, you may have forgotten about it, but you have heard about it. Um, so let's jot down a couple of things that I want you to add, okay? So under TPCAST, if you're looking at, you, we're going to look at the title, and we're going to kind of dig into the poem first that we're going to work on today. Um, when you paraphrase, notice I would either paraphrase by the stanza. Um, in our poem today, there isn't a stanza, so we're going to need to identify um, sections, okay? And we'll work on that together. Connotation is the C. You'll also hear me call it TP fast or TP cast, okay? F is going to be figurative language, which includes all of these things. Um, but connotation is uh, what a lot of people use. So you'll see what meaning does the poem have beyond the literal meaning. So notice that you have all of these different things that you can look at. You don't necessarily have to see every single one of these, all right? And we'll walk through and I'll show you where we can see bits and pieces of these. Attitude is the A. We'll talk about that. Um, one thing that I would write down with attitude is this. Mm. So I always try to remember this. My mother's tone affected my mood, right? So my mother's tone of voice changed how I felt. So that's the same thing that you have in poetry or in literature, that the tone that the speaker or author uses creates a mood within you. Does that make sense? So tone and mood are two different things. Um, shifts. So notice that the shift can be in tone, in setting, in voice. The shift could be in subject. It could be a shift in point of view. There's multiple things that a shift could be because shift happens. Nobody? Anybody? Nobody? Nothing? No? Um, and then we'll revisit the title, and then we'll have theme. And theme is your abstract ideas. Okay? Now, to get to all that, I think we need to dig into the poem first. Okay? So what you're going to see is you're going to see me go through and annotate this poem for you, or with you. Um, and what I want is I want you to jot down what I'm jotting down as we go through, okay? The only way this is going to work is if you interact with me, okay? Now, I told you I'm an over-annotator, so you'll have to bear with me because my lines go everywhere, all right? But I want to show you what I expect annotations to look like. Now, this is not every annotation. This is when we're doing a close read, something that we're going to spend some time on, okay? Um, and we're doing these annotations so tomorrow we can work on creating an LRJ so you can see what an LRJ will look like. All right. All right. So let's jump in. So first of all, we're going to look at Carl Shapiro. So what do we know? Do you, does anybody offhand know anything about Carl Shapiro? I don't think anybody would. That is totally okay. All right. So let me tell you a few things. So he lived from 1913 to 2000. So he's fairly recent. This was first published in The New Yorker, which is a magazine, so we underline it, in February of 1962. Sometimes you get that information, sometimes you don't, okay? So let's think about what do we know about what's happening in 1962? Sometimes it helps us to give us context to, to a subject. What's happening in the 60s? What do you know about the 60s? Crickets. You'll know absolutely nothing that happens in the 1960s. Do what? Possibly. Get your phones out. Google it. Yes. Yes. So we had segregation. We had the civil rights movement. Okay. 
there, find out if there was a war. What do you know about the 60s? Do you know anything about music? Like, what is the music about during that time period? Don't look at me. You got phones in your pockets. Pull out your phones. Good job. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you do. You have kind of the hippies, right? So you have feel good music, but you also have music that is like speaking out, right? So you have a kind of it, it's a time where people there's this movement of of speaking out against society, against the government, whatnot. Okay. Um, I did a little research on on Shapiro last night, and a lot of his poetry is. Um, based around like simple things like we'll see like this is a manhole cover I think um, I looked he has one like on a bicycle so he has he has poetry about very simple things so what do you know about poetry though is it simplistic in its nature what does poetry usually do makes you think about what yeah the meaning of it so it makes you think about life makes you think about something bigger right so we always want to look for an idea that is bigger than what is presented on paper. All right? All right. So let's jump in. First of all, let's look at manhole covers. What do you know? First of all, what is a manhole cover, people? What is it? It's a what? Yeah, so it's, it's metal and it's round. And what did you say that it does? Yeah, so it covers the sewer. So can you all picture it? It's the things in the street, right, that are round and metal that usually have like kind of two holes on the side so people can pull it up, not pull it up easily, right? So let's look. What would you say would be its purpose? To what? So it's, it's to let maintenance people or let workers in. What else would be its purpose? If it's letting people, certain people in, what else is it probably doing? Keeping, Keeping people out. Okay. All right. So when we read, um, I like to do a couple of things. When we're doing a close reading, I like to number paragraphs. So if we are referencing on a page, multiple paragraphs, you can tell me what paragraph you're talking about so we can all kind of hone in on it instead of trying to figure out where you're talking. Um, same thing with poetry. We usually number stanzas. Um, even though the lines are numbered 5 and 10 here, for me, I like to go in and number specific lines just so that I can very quickly go and look at a certain section. So we're going to go through and label 14 lines. Well, keeping TP cast in our brain, in the back of our head, we have to paraphrase. And we say we usually want to look at sections. Are there any stanzas here? No. So we're going to have to find some way of kind of breaking it up into sections. All right? So a couple of things we can do. We can look at punctuation. So notice we have our first one. We have a, um, a question mark there. And then we have commas, 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 commas. And then we have a semicolon, or a colon, sorry. We have a colon, and then we have a period. So here's another period. And then comma, 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 period. So I would say kind of trying to guess, right? We're probably going to break it up, I would say, right around there. And I like to guess before I get into a piece where the breaks or the shifts are, right? And we're going to kind of guess that the shifts might be somewhere around the punctuation. All right? All right. So let's read this together. The beauty of manhole covers, what of that? Like metal struck by a great savage con, like Mayan calendar stones, unliftable, indecipherable, not like old electrum, chased and scored. Mottoed and sculptured to a turn, but notched and whelped and pocked and smashed with the great company names, Gentle Bethlehem, Smiling United States. 
This rust-proofed artifact of my street, long after roads are melted away, will lie sideways in the grave of the iron old world, bitten at the edges, strong with its cryptic American, its dated beauty. Anybody want to tell me what that's about? Got nothing? Nothing? Nobody? Okay. So this is why we can't TP cast it until we dig in. Okay? So let's dig in and work through a little bit. All right. So the very first line, the beauty of manhole covers. So now this kind of tells me a little bit about the topic, right, of what we're looking at in the poem. Beauty. Anybody think about beauty of manhole covers? Anybody go, oh, that manhole cover is beautiful. No, neither do I. Okay. Notice, we notice a couple of things when we are in, um, when we are in writing or we're looking at writing. We look at dashes quite a bit. We look at colons and semicolons as well. So what is the dash here? What, what is its purpose? The beauty of manhole covers. What of that? To, to what? Okay, so it's questioning. So it, it, it's, it creates like this sense of pondering, right? It's not something typical, <laughs> thinking of the beauty of a manhole cover. All right, like metals struck by a great savage con. So notice we have footnotes in there, right? So con is a what? Look below. What is a con? Do we, do you know anything about con? Like any con? Like when you think of con, what name do you think of? Genghis Khan. What do you know about Genghis Khan? Was he a nice man? No, pretty brutal, okay? So you notice that the time period, the Mongolian Empire, we, we were not talking friendly people, all right? So like metals struck by a great savage Khan. So first of all, what does it start with? So that is a simile. So when we have a simile, we have two things compared, right? Notice that it is metals, M-E-D-A-L-S. What are metals? M-E-D, not M-E-T. Yeah, they're trophies. So he's comparing manhole covers to what? Trophies. Uh, of what kind of time period? The what? Analogies. Yeah, so very kind of primitive, right? So these are trophies. That are primitive. All right. Line three, like a Mayan calendar stones, unliftable, unliftable and indecipherable. All right. So again, we have another simile. So look down at Mayan calendar stones. What does it tell you about the Mayan calendar? Okay. So think of, has anybody ever like gone to Mexico? You know, like in the touristy traps, they have like those round, very beautiful calendars. That's a small version of a Mayan calendar. Okay, they're usually very large. Okay, so they have stones that record, like a calendar, right, that record the passage of time each day so they can keep track of what, what time of year it is. All right, so notice it's huge, right? Again, why are we comparing a manhole cover to something like that? Okay, so it shows a passage of time. Good. Are we still same kind of same time period? We're still talking very primitive, right? Okay.
Now notice we have a little bit of a shift. So it's like this, it's like this, but it is now, line four, not like. So it's opposite of this, old electrum. And what is electrum? Electrum is a type of metal, yeah. So this is now a type of METAL. So see the play on words from metal, METAL, right? To metal, METAL, right? So it's not like the old electrum, chased and scored. What does chased and scored mean? Engraved and grooved. Connotation, is that very soft and delicate or is it harsh? Okay, so keep that in mind, all right? Chased and grooved, or chased and scored is engraved and grooved. If you engrave something, you have to be very specific, very particular with it, right? Very careful, okay? So keep that in mind, mottoed and sculptured to a turn. Mottoed, what root word do you see in there that you know? Motto, right? Which means what? What's a motto? What's a motto? Y'all are not a talkative bunch. What's a motto? Like what's Boyd's motto? Yeah, it's a quote that you live by. So it's a saying, so it's it's been marked, right? So mottoed and sculptured to a turn. But, so it's not like this, but, so here's kind of a shift. And whenever I annotate, I always put a heart around um, conjunctions. I know it's silly, but when I'm annotating it, for me, it's, it's easier for me to see when there is my markings and then when there's some pattern in there, right? So, but, so it's not like this. It's not beautiful. It's not carefully designed. It's not that, but what it is, so this is what it is, is notched. What does notched mean? notched and smashed or notched and whelked what does it say below okay what does notched mean so whelked means marked with spirals what is notched mean what's a notch a like a groove okay so it's there's something like taken out right so it's a groove so it's notched and whelked and pocked and smashed so pocked is like pits are kind of created in it um I, I, for me, like I, when I see pocked, I think of the idea of like a piece of wood and some people like to antique it where they grab like a chain or some piece of metal and they bang it on the wood to kind of make it look old. So pocked is going to be like where there's pits and grooves in it. So now it's notched and whelked and pocked and smashed with the great names of companies. So look at the difference. Chased and scored compared to notched and whelked and pocked and smashed. Which one's softer? Which one's harsher? The first one's softer. Yeah, I would say that this one is chased and scored, is soft, uh, more delicate. I don't mean soft as in like materially. I mean like something that's a little bit more delicate, right? And then this is more brutal. And it's notched and whelked and pocked and smashed with what though? What what are those were pocked and smashed and all that to do what? For what purpose? To put company names on it. Okay? What it, so if we're looking at big picture we're creating these manhole manhole covers not for like a sense of beauty like it was for cons or for the Mayan calendar, right? We're creating these like very harsh pieces of, we could say art to show what? Brains hurt, second period. I'm already making your brains work. What's stamped on them? Names, company names, right? So do you think this person feels that that's a good thing to do that? Do you pock and smash 
something that you it, that you that you have respect for that you like no right so this is kind of representing this like industrialized society here and you can tell that he that the 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 speaker doesn't like that right because you look at the comparison of chaste and scored to notched and whelked and pocked and smashed right so what do you think his opinion is of these companies? Does he like them? No. Okay. This rust-proofed artifact of my street. So what is an artifact? You look below at your footnote. Okay. So it's human labor, right? So something made by somebody. And it lasts time. So an artifact lasts through time, right? Long after roads are melted away. Is that good? Do roads just naturally melt away? No. So what can you, what is he suggesting? Do what? Yeah. So the, so through time, what's going to last? These manhole covers, right? Melted away is something that's like, it's not good, right? I mean, roads don't just melt away. Like there's something catastrophic that would happen, right? So it could be, it could be a bit of a prediction. So these artifacts will lie sideways in the grave of the iron old world. What's the iron old world? The grave of the iron old world. Yeah, I would say, again, that's going to kind of rest reference. Yeah. Bitten at the edges. Why would, why would it be, I mean, is it literally bitten? Like somebody going to go gnaw on a manhole cover? No. So what does bitten at the edges mean? What does it show? What does it do? For what? Yeah, so it's, it's, it shows a passage of time. Strong with its cryptic American. Cryptic meaning what? What does cryptic mean? You can feel free to look stuff up when I ask you questions. As long as you're not Snapchatting on your phone, I'm fine. What does cryptic mean? Not everybody at once. Yes. Okay. Strong with its cryptic American. So look at the contrast. You have something that's strong, but hard to see, right? With its dated beauty. Again, you have a contrast. Dated and beauty. Is dated beauty good? Do I want to be a dated beauty? No, no. So what does dated beauty mean? <sighs> Y'all are going to work me this year. What about it? What, what kind of old? So yeah, dated beauty means old. So is, are we saying like it's good? Like it was once beautiful, but it's not beautiful. Yeah, so there's, there's like some kind of change... Um, that it was once beautiful. Now it's not. And we, for, for whatever reason, right? And we can see that where is probably the blame being placed here? Why is something not beautiful? Why is America not beautiful anymore? Because of, yeah, because of us, what we're doing, like the industrialization, right? Because he's kind of like focusing on that a little bit. Does that help us understand a little bit? Okay, now we need to TP cast it. So could you have TP cast it before you dug into it? No. So do you see it takes you a little bit of time to read through? 
and dig through it before you can actually TP cast something. Okay? So take out a piece of paper. And we are going to TP cast. Shapiro's manhole covers. That is the title of a poem. Is it underlined or is it in quotes? I got both answers. Underline is something big. Italics if you're typing right. Underline something big. You put quotes there on things that are small. Is this big or is it small? Small. Even though it's, it, it is a full poem, it is in quotes because it's a short title. It's like titles of chapters, right? Book, big, chapter, small. All right, so the very first thing we have is title. So let's look at our notes. What did we write down for our notes about manhole covers? What did we guess? What do the words suggest to you? So what did we guess? We said that um, they are metal, round, cover sewers, purpose, what do we say? to let workers in. And keep people out. So what would you say? Good connotations? Bad connotations? Like what feeling? Is it is it something that's positive or something that's negative? Manhole covers. Or neutral. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think we really kind of know. I mean, we think of the word cover. We think of the idea of, of, of maybe keeping something away. Just a guess for us to get in. All right, so now we're going to paraphrase. So we said we try to paraphrase in sections. So here, we did break it up by punctuation, right? So we have line one is the first one. So the beauty of manhole covers, what of that? Paraphrase that for me. What is the speaker doing? What's the speaker doing? Pondering what? We can just say the beauty of, um, let can just say manhole cover. The next section we said was line two through what? Two through eight. Okay. So now let's kind of break this down a little bit. Like Mayan calendar, oh sorry, like metals struck by a great savage con, like Mayan calendar stones, unliftable, unliftable, indecipherable. So what is the first? So those first two lines, the speaker is doing what? Compares. Compares what? So compares. The metals and calendar to manhole covers. Uh, I'm going to do a dash and I'm going to say both are primitive. but useful. Okay? Not like electrum chased and scored, mottoed and sculptured to a turn. 
but notched and whelked and pocked and smashed with the great names, with the great company names, Gentle Bethlehem, Smiling United States. So then, what does the speaker do? Okay, so so the first part we said contrasts what? Because we're still kind of looking at the, the, the beauty that is in the metal struck in the Mayan calendar, right? So contrasts the, um, what do we say? Not the softness, but the beauty and the, the delicacy, the beauty and delicacy, delicacy, yes, not like delicacy like food, but delicacy like delicate, right, yes, okay, delicacy, I'm just going to talk that out for a minute, um, the speaker, the speaker contrasts the beauty and delicacy of these primitive tools, with the, now what's the second part? The notched and whelped and pocked and smashed. The harshness. the harshness of what do those uh, company names, great company names represent? The harshness of the industrial society. Okay, good. That's the end. That's line eight, right? So now we go lines nine through 14. So what's happening in lines 14? So now the speaker, so do you see kind of a shift that now we're comparing like something of beauty to something that was kind of created that kind of is now scarring right the earth so now he's going to call this an artifact of time so now what happens what do you think lines 9 through 14 do reread it this rust proof artifact artifact of my street long uh after roads are melted away will lie sideways in the grave of the iron old world bitten at the edges strong with its cryptic american its dated beauty Okay, so the speaker progresses time to show what? What do you think he's showing? What is he showing about the future? before the bell rings. What do you think he's showing about the future? The iron old world. Look at your notes. Look at your annotations. What is he showing about the future? Yeah, that there, the speaker progresses time to show a change, kind of maybe a violent change. Give me two seconds. Yeah, so to kind of show a violent change. Yes? Okay. So look at what you have to do tonight. The next section is you need to cast it. So do you see how we did our notes? So don't put up yet. Listen to me. 